The Member of Parliament for Bilsa South, Dr. Clementa Park, has blamed the National Buffer Stock Company for the challenges associated with the supply of food to senior high schools nationwide. He was reacting to a release by the Public Interest and Accountability Committee, PIAC, which raised concerns over supply of unwholesome food and corruption in the current process being implemented. Speaker asked me to withdraw and I refused to because I believed that what I was saying was true. Dr. Clementa Park, who is also a member of the Education Committee of Parliament, raised the issue on the floor of Parliament on November 21 last year. Another issue that is of importance is the quality of the food that is supplied. And we are told that there are instances where expired food items will be concluding are supplied to students. Mr. Speaker, is this the best we can do? And I will do right on the point of correction. Mr. Speaker, this is a house of records. I heard my honorable uh, friend uh, talking about expired food products being served uh, to students, and uh, I would like to know where this information is coming from so that we can take action. Mr. Speaker, fortunately, the chairman of my committee who was there is sitting right by the minister. And he knows it is true. Honorable, to us, the bedding is upon you. It wasn't reported to us in only one school. Honorable, the there were several schools. Honorable, honorable, the bedding is on you. Establish or withdraw. The Public Interest and Accountability Committee PIAC press release raised concerns over the poor quality and delays in supply of food and other items after monitoring the performance of the 2018-2019 free SHS. Dr. Park says the buffer stock is to blame. Another school that we visited, we were told that they were, they were supplied with palm oil that was unwholesome. They became aware that it was unwholesome after they had used it to prepare the food. In the case of the tomato paste, of course, there's always an expiry date. This current system where the buffer stock uh, station in Accra gives contracts to various persons to supply food items to the institutions on the blind side of the heads of institutions is not helpful. PIAC further raised concerns over corruption risks associated with food supply and the Bursa South legislator want middlemen, thus the suppliers, removed so that school authorities, including headmasters and bursars, would have control over the process. When the head of institution does not know the quantity of food that he or she is supposed to receive, and yet they are supposed to receive it, then there's the possibility that the supplier can manipulate the quantities. Because if you have a student population of 2,000, as a head of institution, you may know that you need 100 bags of rice or gari. The supplier may bring you 50. But you have no recourse because the arrangement is made between the supplier and the buffer stock. And so how do you determine whether or not the quantities you are getting are the quantities that you've been truly allocated? Now away from the senior high school, let's go to Parliament where members of the minority side of Parliament are further pressing their demand for the government to release their common fund or risk boycotting the state of a nation um, address. Now the Kumbungu MP, Ras Mubarak, contributing on the floor of Parliament doing business statement for next week, is demanding answers from the majority leader on the welfare of MPs regarding the share of the common fund. Joining us online is TV3's Komna Kluche. He's in Parliament. Hello, Komna. Good afternoon. Hello, Komna. Can you hear me? Can you hear you? Yes. Right. So what is the minority saying about the uh, common fund and the state of the nation's address? So uh, about three days ago, this, this issue emerged in the house after the minority caucus had a very lengthy meeting regarding the welfare of members of uh, the parliament top of the agenda was uh the non-payment of uh, the MPs shall the common fund. They allege that uh, the district assembly's common fund has has been paid, but right. that of uh, the, the MPs has not been paid. In fact, the 
they make the demand that they are not even asking uh, for the fourth quarter, but they are asking for the third quarter. Mm. Uh, this this one was a while ago on the floor of the house when the majority leader was giving business statement uh, for next week. Uh, the member of parliament for Kumbu Ras Mubarak and also the Satna Rigo MP. Um, uh, the Honorable ABA Fuseni reiterated the call that this is something that is top most on their mind. In fact, it is one thing that is affecting all MPs. In fact, Ras Mubarak makes the point that it is a statutory payment that the state must make to uh, the MPs, which would facilitate their work. But in responding to it just a short while ago, the majority leader said, change. Chairman Sabonso says that uh, one, the issue of the MPs common fund is not statutory. In fact, he corrected him by saying that it is not statutory. However, okay. it is a fund that will urge or, or help uh, the MPs do their work. However, he gives the assurance that next week, Tuesday, uh, the joint caucus will be together with, with uh, the Minister of Local Government. Uh, to get answers on this, but he was quick to say or to tell uh, the MPs on the mi minority side that some matters are better kept in the warehouse. Right, come now. Let me just interrupt like, you really yeah, quickly. Said, meaning that it's not something that they are supposed to come out and then they talk about it Absolutely. publicly. Now, do you get the indication that they will back down on their demand or they would still go ahead with uh, the boycott of Sona? Well, as to whether those answers are satisfactory, they give a deadline of Friday, which is today, and uh, we are yet to pick indications from them as to whether they are going to back down on it or if the answers uh, are, are unsatisfactory and they are going to go on with uh, the boycott as uh, they are alleged. We'll see how it pans out when they are out of 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 the, the debate. You know. so, however, but away from this, the president is supposed to give the State of the Nation address. Uh, next week, Thursday, the House is getting itself ready to welcome him. Next week, Thursday, for him to come and give the State of the Nation address. All right, Komla, thank you very much. Komla Kluche is our man in Parliament. Let's go back to education, where the Public Interest and Accountability Committee, PIAC, has observed that the free senior high school policy could fail if concerns raised in the committee's monitoring report on the policy is not given serious attention. Now, the challenges captured include corruption risk associated with food supply to senior high schools. The, the chairman of PIAC, Nobo Waja, spoke to William Evans Nkum. We had made conscious efforts to visit schools around the country in selected uh, regions, districts, and there are, and there are. So these are clear, um, um, how do I call it, testimonies of school authorities and students. So we are recording what we have heard from the field. And in fact, we have a, a report to this. When we go to our website, you see the schools that we have visited and uh, in the areas that we covered. So uh, it is not a conjecture, but it's a product of uh, uh, a consultation, or it was a product of a visit. All right. Now, you also talked about performance. The abolition of cut-off grades in the admission of students has led to a situation of dumping of poor grade students in schools, particularly deprived schools. What you are saying, uh, is that not a contradiction? Because we also know that the free SHS was purposely introduced to afford every Ghanaian child access to free equity and quality education? Well, as you have rightly used the word access to quality uh, and the other variable you mentioned, uh, that even informs the very reason we are pre-archives of this position. Uh, we are saying that if you want to ensure quality, then you should be interested in what provides that quality you are talking about. Because what we are talking about is quality. But you have students who uh, have demonstrated clearly that they are probably not, uh, they don't have this academic orientation. That doesn't mean they are useless citizens. There could be other areas that will be of interest to them, maybe skills in, the, maybe it can be a mechanic. That is clearly also an indication which needs to be looked Right, so uh, welcome back to the studio. Now, joining me now is Kofi Asari. He is with the Education Watch, Af Education Watch Africa. Good afternoon. 
Hello, good afternoon. Uh, Pierre raised quite a number of concerns, concerns with infrastructure, concerns with quality of food, but let's focus our conversation on um, quality of performance. They say, for instance, that the current system um, has caused the quality of you know, students to dip. Uh, they also raise concerns about bringing back the cutoff the cut um, system. What do, you, what do you make of it? Yeah, um, I have been reviewing the PIAC report since it, it, was, it was launched, and then um, it is more or less confirming most of the issues that uh, were raised in the initial research that um, I consulted for um, two years ago. Now, I think the issues they are raising are cogent issues. Immediately, you make free senior high school a universal policy, more or less. It means that people who are having between a grade 30 and 50, who previously wouldn't have qualified to enter senior high school, will now enter. Right. And the question arises, are they materials for secondary school? Can they be taught? You understand? And so when you go to most schools, teachers will tell you that, look, this how about one third of this classroom in a science class? I remember in a science class in one of the top schools, teacher told me that first teacher told me that these people here are difficult. Mm. If I say I'm gonna put the class together and teach them at the same rate, it will take a whole time to finish just all light with just one subject. And so it is a, a challenge. But as a country, this is what we need to do. There are two things. First is that we need to marry our local commitment to international commitment. Internationally, we've committed to the Sustainable Development Goals. And Goal 4 simply says, among others, that universal secondary education by 2030, 10 years from now, right. it means that by 2030, every child of secondary school going age, put it very well, every junior high school student must enter senior high school. Mm. Okay? Right. And so, be looking at our commitment towards universal secondary education by 2030, Vis-a-vis -vis the introduction or the possible introduction of cutoff to ensure that those who migrate or transit to secondary secondary level are those who have the competencies and can be taught. There is a conflict there Absolutely. because we have already committed that every child of secondary school going age must be in school by 2030. And so I think we need to work our talk. We, once we have committed to SDG 4, we need to be focused at universal secondary education. And when you go to countries like Argentina and Brazil and most of the South American countries, they have universal secondary education. Mm. The least qualified person is a secondary school graduate. Right. Except that we have to improve the quality at the basic level. Which takes me to my next question. How do we then improve the quality of education? You mentioned earlier that this, the system as we have it now um, enjoins everyone to, you know, from the junior high school level to go to the senior high school level. That means that you will have some weak students. But what do you do? How do you bring them to speed so that you know we don't have a situation where all the students are, are at the secondary school the, level the, yet? The, the system now doesn't enjoin everybody to go. Mm. The system now is currently producing 80% transition rate. Right. Currently, under the freezing line, that's now averagely 400,000 crossed, crossed the bridge. There's still 20% who are not able to transit to senior high school. Mm. There's still 20%. So the system now has a cutoff sort of because if you have nine, if you fail in math and or English, you cannot go. So the system now is not yet wholesale, even though it's a very relaxed one, you understand. But if we are going universal secondary education, the issue of cutoffs, the issue of removal of um, if you have nine, you can go, you can go, all those things will have to be relegated. Everyone that enters junior high school one will have to find their way to senior high school three as a matter of um, rights because of the universal secondary education policy that we have acceded to. And don't forget that as we speak, there's a new education bill, the preacher education bill, which has been in and out of parliament. And that one of, the, one of the, the, the fundamental changes that the bill is seeking to bring is to redefine basic to include secondary. It means that once basic education is a right in 32 of our constitution, if you redefine basic to mean primary and secondary schools, then it means that SHS will now be a right fundamental as in per the direct principle of state policy. Mm. If that happens, everybody who enters junior high school one must enter senior high school three. And so what we should do as a country is to one, ensure that the quality at the basic level is improved so that those who move to secondary school mm. are people who can be molded or whose capacity can be enhanced to appreciate what is being taught at right. secondary level. And then also we need to make a frantic effort to, 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 
to provide quality career guidance to the students so that at the level of junior high schools, they will have the luxury of decisions to decide whether to go to TVET or any other relevant field that they have comparative advantages or competencies in. Mm. So that we don't produce all this 500,000 wholesale or wholesale junior high school right. students into grammar education I'm when no one is going to I'm haven't said anything about the teachers who have to transfer knowledge because if they are children, they are, they are weak students and, and you know, um, at that level, you need the competencies of the teachers to bring them up to speed. Don't our teachers need training to ensure that as many as are coming in now, they, they will be able to bring up to speed the weak ones? They do. It's a mixed bag, you know, ensuring that the quality that arrives at secondary school at, at secondary school is good it means that you need to enhance the capacity of teachers at the junior high school and at the basic school. The ongoing teacher reforms, you know, um, is all aimed at ensuring that the minimum teacher has a Bachelor of Education degree, the minimum teacher, I mean the average teacher has a BA degree, the average teacher has a license to teach you know after going through all these processes these new teacher reforms are aimed at ensuring that the average teacher is qualified and properly equipped with the know-how to teach and produce quality instruction which will lead to quality learning outcomes if the if the reforms go on as envisioned or as we are currently seeing we'll get to a point where every teacher in ghana would have had the minimum qualification and the competency and the license and given the resources right. and the environment mm. the teachers will be able to produce quality learning outcomes at the basic level so that those who are teaching at the secondary level will be will be receiving as inputs at the secondary level quality people who can really be trained at the secondary level and then you know and so we need a lot to do we need to do a lot in terms of ensuring that those that we ship to the secondary level okay. have the quality mm. to, uh, to participate in secondary education. Right. And then also at the secondary education level, we need to ensure that the teachers there have the capacity to train them and then our schools have the capacity to absorb them. To but absorb we them. are moving towards a universal secondary education system worldwide. We have committed to the sustainable development goal. And so right. we, we cannot divorce ourselves from the fact that every child will go to secondary school in Ghana at a point in the next 10 years. Kofi Asari is with the Education Watch Africa.